at what point should a writer have earned the audience's trust? And if it's not there by that point, it's going to be hard to get it later. God, page, <clears throat> page one. <laughs> um, you know, um, I mean, I'll, I'll look at a screenplay and, and literally line one, I'm already going, Really? does wow. this person have the job? I can't look, I can't look at one line and definitively say, but, I, but I'll tell you what, you give me, you show me the first sentence, or maybe not, the, it, it can't be just the slug line, the slug line in one sentence of, um, you know, you should, it is interesting, but if I saw the slug line in one sentence of 10 screenplays, um, I bet you I could tell you how much I'm gonna like that screenplay um, within probably 80% likelihood. Like I can see a professional crafted line in, in just two sentences. Um, I don't do that that harshly or whatever, but like, you know, I'll at least give them a page or two if I'm gonna sort of evaluate something. But like, um, there's just so many choices. I mean, you're talking, it's, it's, it's sort of like poetry in a sense where every word counts and you can often, when you've done it for so long, realize I don't need that word, I don't need that word, I could subtract, subtract, you get that white space flowing on the page so you can um, just very efficiently and then muscular word choices and specific words. There's so much to be seen. Again, so I'll, I'll even say this. If you take, a, if you take even the way the slug line is formatted and the way they're talking about the time of day and those things, those are choices. And, um, and amateurs tend to make one pool of choices and professionals tend to make other ones. Again, tendencies. But like, yeah, I would think 80% of the time I could look at two lines and I could feel like this is probably a professional or somebody at least writing at the professional level. And so if that page one is not, is not up to par, it's going to be very difficult, almost impossible maybe, to gain that trust for the reader or well, audience later on? So yes, but it's not binary, right? So what will happen is, um, you know, all, anybody who's spending the hours and hours of time writing a screenplay has some sort of talent, you know what I mean? They have something going on, right? So, you know, I don't think I've ever read a screenplay that had like zero, like <laughs> nothing, right? There's something, you know? So, um, but what'll happen is I'll get to page one if I was just picking up a random script from random amateur writer and I look at page one, again, I look at line two or three and I'm already knowing, yeah, this person's probably, you know, from the scale of totally professional to total beginner, within two sentences, I know that, okay, this is probably where this person is. And I'll get to the end of the first page and I'm now I have a 90% chance or 95% chance of knowing where they are. Now, that being said, if I'm a production company and I'm looking for a thriller and my friend said he read, he read this thriller and it was amazing and I read page one and I'm going, okay, my friend, I trust my friend, he's saying it's amazing, I'm looking at this thing, it's not a, really a professional level written thing, it's kind of amateurish. I might not toss it in the trash at that point, I might go, um, okay, but you're, it's, 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 it, you're leaning against it, you're sort of, you're, you're minimizing it. So it's important not to see it in a binary way where it's this or that, but at a certain point in Hollywood, it will be binary. They'll, they'll give you, first of all, they're not even gonna read the script unless in one sentence you, you can pitch the story. Um, and then they'll go, oh yeah, that's worth my time, and they'll give it a couple pages and then toss it when it's not any good. It's more than just formatting issues, though. You said it's also like word choices, and uh, you know, it's not just how much white's on the page or even the it's, slug. It's all those things, right? Because it's the, the screenplay format is so um, it's kind of clunky. It's a clunky format, right? Um, the, you know, uh, the, the way the slug line works, and it just it's sort of yeah. I mean, whereas prose, it's just like a waterfall of, of words. You know, uh, and I don't even write prose, but like. Um, but the screenplay format is just, it's blocky. Um, and so, because there's those limitations, um, when you get really familiar with the format, you can see people very quickly making choices within this sort of format that are, you know, different good or different bad or, or different inexperienced. You know, there was a script, that, a spec script that came out a couple of years ago that was doing all sorts of crazy things with fonts and craziness and, um, I love a little of that when it's organic and it feels inspired. Um, but this script, I, 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 you know, I wanted to wring somebody's neck after about 30 pages. I was like, you know, it was like, oh wow, cool idea, and I like it. Because they were really stretching the bounds of the format. Um, and then it felt like to me it was a, um, it was, at least to me, for my sensibility, it, was, it felt like a trick or a gimmick. 
It wasn't that they, um, to my mind, I wasn't able to find my way in emotionally to what their vision was, you know? So, um, so, uh, but I don't know, I mean, um, but they, you know, certainly made a splash doing that. And, um, and who knows, maybe if other people really liked it, then that's, that's great. That's the other thing is it's a subjective business. So, um, you know, I have very refined and, and strongly held beliefs, but I'm just one opinion, you know? I mean, we, you know, we might disagree about what won the Oscar in any given year. You love it, I hate it, or vice versa. And that's a movie that's produced and heralded as the best that we've got and stark disagreements. So um, certainly any spec script um, by any writer, um, you know, it just needs to be, um, I mean, if I'm working with somebody, I'm, what's interesting about that is if I'm, if I'm working with somebody, my opinion doesn't even really come up because it doesn't matter. My, what I do is, or even when I write my own stuff, it's I'm an advocate for their audience and I gently in an inspired way just ask questions what I think that their audience is gonna be wondering. You know, why, you know, I think your audience is going to want a more cohesive idea here. You know, what if, like your, I know your audience is, craves to have a sense of irony in your concept. You know, I know your audience might, you know, when you're thinking about constructing your log line, they want a character's goal that is just driven, and it's powerful, and there's these stakes, and then there's a conflict. Um, so I just, sort of, I, I articulate what I'm, in my experience, I believe their audience is going to be thinking, and that gives the people I work with um, a really fine sort of goalpost for them to shoot at. And that's the great thing is that um, whenever you, whatever your writing process is and whatever your support system is, you, you wanna have a really high quality feedback loop so you can stay focused on the task at hand in an inspired way and move as quickly as possible. What slows up writers is they don't have a quality feedback loop system. They kind of figure it out their own. They might read a book, but they can read a book and they don't know if they're actually applying the book or not. Um, and then they might have all sorts of hangups about getting feedback because this person yelled at them and they take toxic feedback or they, or they're, you know, they take too much feedback and they drown out their own voice. There's all sorts of nightmares, but like having a world-class um, feedback and development system is absolutely one of the best things I've done for my career. Um, I mean, and I'm so good at it. I can even, I can even take to somebody that's like a lay person that doesn't even know the business and I can ask them for feedback in a certain way and it gives me a high quality echo of what's going on. If you just hand them, if I hand my sister the script and my sister's awesome and uh, she, she used to always watch our, our high school movies and she always has some belting laugh. <laughs> so we call her like the laugh anchor. But anyway, but in general, if I was to give her my script uh, and she would basically say, oh, I liked it or I didn't like it, right? That's sort of base level analysis. Um, but what you can do is take even a lay person, if you direct them in the right way with how you ask for feedback. So, you know, uh, you, you know, for my sister, I could say, was there any, um, what was your favorite character? Was, um, which character do you feel like you wanted to know more about or needed more sort of development? <clears throat> which scenes felt like you didn't need them, right? These are questions she absolutely can answer um, definitively from her opinion. And she would have almost never thought to tell that to me if I just gave it to her because she's a layperson, right? She's just going, oh, I, I like this line of dialogue or this was great or I didn't like it or whatever. So, um, so whatever writers use for their feedback system, whether they have a writer's group or a coach or accountability partner or whatever works for them, um, I would invite them to have it be a really high quality echo because we're anticipating, we're in the reaction business and we're anticipating that reaction from the audience and the better that feedback loop can be and the quicker it can be, the faster our career will move forward. What do you say to screenwriters who are insulted or feel that it's too rushed or you're not respecting the craft when you can tell by page one or even really halfway down the page whether it's a professional level screenplay? What do you say to those people? Um, it's a great question, and there, I know a lot of writers um, feel very strongly about that. Like, how could you even tell if my screenplay is any good if you've only read, you know, you know, one page or even a couple lines? That's rid ridiculous. Um, okay, 
you know, fine. Uh, you can disagree with me all you want. Um, I believe I am familiar enough with this stuff um, and I see patterns and indicators of success and I see a correlation, um, you know, and I, and I believe it and not only in me, every experienced, right, every, like 100% of the, not 100%, maybe 95, 98% of experienced writers that I know absolutely feel like, again, it's not binary. They can't read a line or a page and go, this is definitively crap or definitively good. But, you know, you know, the, all my peers, I, I, I absolutely would put money on them looking at a particular random script and after reading one page, they all for sure could say this is an amateur level writer or this is a, you know, probably, not even 100%, but I think for the most part. And it's just because there's, what I think the people they get upset about is they don't, they don't know what they don't know. They don't realize how many choices they're making on the page. And that's probably why they get pissed off is because they're going, okay, the character gets in the car or in such and such happens, but right, but like, you know, I've written 25, 30 screenplays, so I've, and, and, and that's just like finished ones, not to mention some of those drafts were 15, 20, 30 drafts and probably another 30 treatments. So like, I've, I've been in the game for a while and I've seen a lot of stuff and, and you just get familiar with the same thing over and over and over again. So, um, so what they, so a, a, a person writing their first, second, third screenplay, for them, they're just focusing on basic, oh, there's a guy, I see him in the car, and they just say, guy gets in the car. But like, you know, I, I'm seeing that same line and I'm thinking of it on 10 levels. You know, I'm thinking of it on how many words, the, how muscular the words are, the cadence, what's going on before that and after, um, you know, how, um, you know, uh, symbolically, how does it relate to the theme? You know, and again, I don't do all that on the first draft, but by the time I get to that end draft, on every line I've thought about dozens and dozens of times with those different lenses. And because I have that much familiarity with every single line in my screenplay, um, I can read a line from an amateur who's probably looked at that line two times, three times, five times. Um, and when I look at something two times, five times, it's like that. It's not really, it does, you know, it looks like a rough rock. It doesn't look like a gem. When I've seen something a dozen times, 20 times, especially after all my experience, it shines in a different way. You just, the, the magic comes through it in a, in a way that's different. So, um, even if you were to look at, you know, my first draft and my, and my last draft, you, you're just seeing a rougher edge with all those things. And that's just part of the process. And that's another thing is that a lot of, um, Amateur writers, they, they won't do as many drafts as they need to to really shine. Or they'll do the drafts, but they're, they're changing the wrong damn things that don't even make a difference. Um, which kind of breaks my heart because um, they've got enough creativity and they love it enough, but they don't know the way through the forest, so they end up spending years and years wandering around. And then some of them quit. It's, it's terrible. Can you give me an example of, of poorly used cadence? Um... So poorly used, that's, that's an interesting question. Poorly used cadence in dialogue would be something that doesn't sound authentic to that character, right? Usually it's the writer's own voice. <laughs> they all sound like, you know me. And you know what, the truth is, um, I am fine writing my early drafts pretty much with everybody in my, in, my, in my voice. I mean, why not? I mean, if I have an ear for them, fine, I'll do it. But like, even if the thing I'm writing now has this British character and, you know, I'm doing kind of a, you know, whatever loose idea of a British. I, I'll, I'll imagine like um, a guy from Hell's Kitchen or like Pierce Morgan or I mean, what did he say? And I, but like, I don't sweat it. It's sort of like, it's more like me kind of doing a bad British accent or whatever. <laughs> That's kind of the cadence that I'm hearing. And then as I get to draft drafts, I'll maybe bring in a friend who's British and go, dude, can you take a look at this? And he'll go, yeah, we would never say this. We would never do that, you know? Or like when I was writing Astronauts, it was great to um, get real astronauts and go, um, yeah, we described this stuff and we're kind of like pulling it off stuff we got out of the internet. I don't, you know, you tell me. And it was really exciting every time they were like, no, 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 that's legit, that's right. I was like, ooh, wow, it is, that's, that's amazing. So um, cadence for a line of description is really where your voice comes from as a screenwriter. Um, you know, Hemingway very classically had this very simple sort of style. 
Um, there's most of the screenwriters on the, on the, that make the blacklist every year have a pretty visceral sense of their voice. So if you look at, you pick three scripts from the blacklist and you look at their first couple lines on their first page, you're going to probably see slight differences in cadence um, in the way they, they talk. And it's just, you feel it. It's, it's weird because it's, it's, cadence is different. It's a, it's a rhythmic thing. Um, uh, and, and you know, word choice plays part of it, but it's just sort of a, it's a rhythm. It's, I, I think the first time I thought about, I learned about that sort of thing was um, Spike Lee, um, one of his books, you know, his first, you know, How I Made This, How I Made She's Gotta Have It, whatever that book was. But it was, um, I read the book and I was like, oh, this is exactly the way Spike talks in like interviews and stuff. And I was like, oh, you can do that. You're not supposed to write this kind of fakey fake format that you learn in school. And it was like, and it was so, it just felt more personal, you know. So I think um, screenwriters that have a great voice, they describe those action scenes with um, not so much like so strongly, there, but like there's a sense of their cadence in this genre in service to this particular story. So I haven't read a Spike screenplay in a while. So I don't know exactly what he does on the page, but I would imagine it's, I mean, the thing I read of his was his nonfiction, so it was very much his voice. But voice is, is great. It's probably one of the things that, um, again, most of the scripts that make the blacklist every year are, are mostly powerful in, in voice. Um, and then somewhat in, in concept, although some of the concepts are not very strong, um, and then they can execute. But I, uh, in my UCLA extension class, we would often teach a lot of those um, screenplays from the blacklist. And very interestingly, the, um, the ratings were all over the board. It wasn't like, you know, I wouldn't tell them which ones were on. Sometimes I would, sometimes I wouldn't, but like it didn't matter. There was literally um, some of the scripts they hated the most in the class were blacklist scripts. Wow. It's, it's, there's so much subjectivity in the business, so you just have to know how to, getting back to that feedback system, you know how to take subjectivity out of it. You need enough data points so that it's not um, one person is never making or breaking you or one contest or one whatever. You need enough data points so that um, uh, subjectivity is not a significant factor. I think Kevin Smith, too, has a very distinct cadence That's to right. his writing and, and, and in his book. And um, That's right. When you talked about muscular words, yeah. can, you, can you give me an example of a weak muscular word versus a strong one? Um, so um, muscular is sort of like the opposite of um, pa you know passive to or passive active is more good but, but you could say passive or active and then active even more muscular so um, we are talking right is a passive way in a very bland way um, um, we are enthralled in conversation and maybe that's even a little too flowery but right but we are um, digging into the meat of the craft of screenwriting. You know, you can feel the difference between those different word choices. And the amateur will do things like we are talking. And, and that's why you can see it in one, one, one sentence. And then you might have somebody who's getting, low, again, you know, the other thing I said about enthralled or whatever, and that might be a little bit too flowery, right? Um, but you'll see the, um, the writers that have that voice, it, there's, this, there's a poetry to it. It's, it's just beautiful. It's, it's just enough sort of flourish on it. It's not too fancy, or sometimes it will be. Oh, there was a guy that wrote, um, uh, I forget his name, but he, um, anyway, any great screenwriter has really distinct cadence and voice.